that you get the notes and everything of this session as well. I will be doing what I would be in the programming JavaScript because we are doing this for JavaScript in the lectures folder. You know, we have week one to week three and week four. I'll create a new folder here. And again, if someone else come, I'll, I'll let them know again because right now it's time has not started. So I'll make a new folder here and I'll call it review. And not only review, review underscore 29. Uh, September just to just to have remember like everyone for everyone. So I am making this new folder and I would be working in that folder. And now uh, this is just previous HTML that we were doing yesterday. And after that, what I'll do is that, of course, I'll just create a new file and I'll call it script.js here. So, and not only that, I'll open up a terminal. So we are saving our time so that we can, and I'll go to directly to programming JavaScript and CD lectures. CD uh, review underscore 29 set. So now I'm inside the folder and I am all ready. So again, uh, when you go to my, uh, like, you know, uh, the GitHub account, you will find that the folder name will be review of 29 September. So you'll get all the data there because, you know, I'll be updating that, uh, like, updating that those changes on my, my, my GitHub as well. <clears throat> All right. So just to just to keep you informed, everyone else just joining in that we will be having this folder review underscore 29 September, and it would be uh, a folder alongside with week folders in the lectures. So again, you will get the very quick idea that okay, this was the session that we had in our uh, as a as a review of our topics, right? Okay. So I, as I asked. Uh, I still don't see any private message from anyone. Please let me know if you if you want me to in include something. And again, I would like to thank those who have already sent their problems or, or their observations that what what really bothers them. So you know that would that would really give me an idea that what to include, what not to include. So again. So good morning, all of those who are just joining in. And yes, as I said, I would be happy to have your comments. Even good morning. And <clears throat> so as I as I mentioned in my announcement, so we are already recording by the way, those who are joining in, just let let them know to let them know that we are already recording. Um, so as I told in the like you know, mentioned in my announcements and every like announcement of this session. That I'll try to keep it very, very basic. So please bear with me if you start feeling at some point of time that I'm getting bored, boring, and I'm just repeating one thing, one over the other, or over and over. So bear with me because you know this session is for that really purpose. That uh, because you know our main class sessions uh, generally uh, we as a faculty are in a bit of rush, not a rush, <laughs> in a bit of hurry to just you know to to complete the topic somehow, you know. Of course, at times, you know, we we, we we get in a situation that we have to decide whether uh, we should leave a topic or we should rush through a topic, you know, whatever. But uh, whenever you have these kind of sessions that we have right now, uh, this this really gives me a chance to to pace myself, you know, very slow. And by when I say very slow, it's again something that I I really love to go through, like on you know, the pace that through which I would like to always go through. OK, so yes, again and again, I'm just saying thanks to those who have sent their observations, their problems. I, I have read them. I know them like now. I would keep those observations in mind and. Uh, and of course, I'm ready to ready to have. Uh, any uh, any suggestions, any, you know, understand like, you know, things from those who are just joining in. Send a private message what you want me to repeat, what you want me to. Uh, and, and another important thing again, I'm just. So, so uh, Katrina looks like you are uh, you are unmuted, I think by mistake. Oh, so Katrina looks like you are unmuted. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> so 
we, we could hear your your keystrokes you know very clearly <laughs> so good morning katrina <laughs> okay yes happy friday oh that's not a problem katrina you know it's, it really happens when you just join the session um yes so another very important thing a uh, session a uh, very important point before we start our session that please if you don't understand anything at all at any point of time let me know you know never never allow me to go if you if you feel that okay this point is bothering me and no one is just going forward i don't want you to go forward so again please stop me as, as i said i would uh, i would try to keep myself very slow but it's also your responsibility to just let me know wherever you start getting slipping so you just let me know morning alan good many you have a hand raised uh, is it intentional no, i just i just want to say um uh, yeah. you be as basic as you possibly be mm -hmm. for, for me i, I don't want to drag everybody down to my level though but uh, <laughs> i just you know yeah I want to make sure that I understand the very, very basic as much as I can today. Oh, many, many. And I would really highly encourage you that as I as I'm saying, if you ever feel that I'm going at a at a little faster speed, you just let me know, you know, and and if something is bothering you still, you just let me know uh, then and there. Right. And 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 it's not about like bringing all others to your pace. It's actually uh, I want everyone to be on the good pace this class, <laughs> you know, so. So don't worry about that one, Mary, and, and and let me know. Okay, so we are one minute away, and hopefully, yeah, are you saying something? No, I just say thank you. Okay, welcome. All right, so we are just one minute away, and uh, uh, again, so those people who have joined, they have said good morning, so good morning to them as well, a very good morning, and as yes, happy Friday, and uh, you know, a long weekend. Actually, you know, it's a long weekend. I just realized yesterday with uh, like Krista's email that we are, off on Monday, you know, Monday is 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 no classes. Anyhow, yes, so we are on time. So Brendan, you forgot to unmute yourself. Looks like. OK, so this is the review session and by review, I mean that I would be as I said that I would try to try my level best to to make you guys understand. So I'll start with my own style and again, I'll try to reach somewhere with with that one so javascript is is a very interesting language the issue is you know the what i issue i understand is that you guys have already studied python there you are not required to use any specific syntax and that really spoils some of some people when they start programming in in python they they are spoiled in a way that they they do not understand that there is a there is a syntactic requirements of some languages so the issue is that you know most of the language things and you know everything but the problem is that you have to translate most of those things into javascript and that is really bothering some of the some of the people and and i would like to talk about that so i'm just starting that one first of all very basic thing about any programming language is declaring variables and this is important you know why i'm saying that because the questions I received, I'm feeling that I would like to talk about that one. Declaring variables. So I'm starting with a basic. So in JavaScript, we have this uh, uh, these keywords to declare some variables. We have a keyword called var. We have a keyword called let. We have a keyword called const. And you have seen all of them every now and then over here and there. So as I've been seeing, uh, saying in from the beginning, right now just understand that, okay, these are the three ways of defining variables. Though, though very soon I will, I will tell you that actually var and let. So for example, if I write var x and let y, for example, and const z, all of three have their own, you know, specific implementations. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you know because, you know, uh that's 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 something that's something that i would really want to just talk about var x let y but let's let's suppose i would say that you can use any of the formats so if i say var x now what is this x that's a very interesting thing i am saying that i should have a reference name through which in which i can store different values and i can play with those values 
like I can store new value. I can I can keep on changing the values. I can keep on storing the values and I can manipulate those values. What does that mean? I say var x. So now if I write x is equal to 10, x has a value of 10 right now. Now in the step, this step x is equal to 10. I step next step comes and I say x is equal to 100. A next step come and I say x is equal to 1000, something like that. Now what is happening? It is the same x, but it's getting different values. So I, I'll just, you know, console.log x and console.log. OK, what is this console.log? I'll talk about that as well, you know, because I know some of you might be thinking about that. Now, so what I've done, I have declared a variable x. And since it's a variable, I can store multiple types of multiple multiple values in this variable. In one calculation, I stored x is equal to 10. X got 10. In second step, maybe I stored 100. Third step, I, I, I stored 1000. Now variable, actually the definition of variable is that variates. That variates, that can have different values. That can have different values. So in a variable, I can store any types of values. Now, this is a good time that I will just dis discuss about this one. What is this console.log? Console is, is the area when I when I when I want to print something in JavaScript. So console object is used, and this console object has a function called log. So whatever we pass this to console.log it actually just prints that out. Now, what does that mean? If I just come here, even before var x, if I say here console.log. Hello, Keen. So console.log, so log is a function. Remember, log is a function which resides inside the console object. And, and what it does is that when it is called, from the console object, bring out the log message, pass this hello key in, and do something. So now I'll, 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 I just gone to a, a little back. And now what will happen if I save this and I run this program? I'm hoping you, you guys know how to run this. You should reach to the uh, to that uh, directory and run note script.js. Now, if you see here, whatever I give to this console.log, it just prints it out. Very simple. Now, as I said, I have a way to define variable in JavaScript. So if I define a variable and I say console.log, so I say x and rather, so I say x and I just pass this x. x is a variable. It has some value. So console.log will go and read the value and print that value. Now I will run that. You see here, it says, oh, what is this zero zero? I hit enter by mistake here. <laughs> okay, so it says that hello keen because this was the hello keen. And after that, it just prints out because I have defined a variable X. It just takes the value X is equal to 10 and store and prints that. Now, if I want to, if I want to combine a string and a variable, that's very easy in console.log. If I say, come over here and I write a string, I write, the value of x is now this is a string. And if I put a comma, that will also work. I say the value of x is x. Take this value from the top. So this x is a string. This will print out as it is. But this x is a variable that will take the value from the top. What does that mean? If I come here and I just run that one, so I would, oh, I did not save that. <laughs> I did not save that, sorry about that. So now if I run this, you see that what it shows. The value of X is 10. Now this 10, this X is replaced with the value. Are you, are you, are you understanding this? Like again, you know, this is very basic, but again, I want, because this is, this is one of the point which, which is like, you know, which is for some students, the problem. So X can have any value. 
I plug in that value and it would combine the string with the variable value and it will just show that value. I'll, I'll just remove this one just to show you in the same way. Now, if I just change this value from 10 to 100 over here, X is now 100, so no harm. See, console.log will take the value and it will run that and it says the value of X is 100. So variables are there to store values. We, we know about that one. And why I'm just making that? Because, you know, some, some students have asked about the functions, parameters and things. I wanted to tell them that this is called, so this X itself can be anything. I can say, for example, var age. I can say var age. Age is equal to 20. Now, if I want to print this one, I would say value of X is one. Yes, I, I'll just use that one. So the value like like you are right? you are. You are. And now let's see what even has mentioned. I will write plus and I write age and I'll again write a plus. I can concatenate two things. Years old. Now see here. I've just tried to combine a string. Look at that here. You are. Age years old. Are you guys getting that one? And now, if you allow me, I would keep on muting the previous code because you know that would give me a, a good, uh, like clear view of what I'm doing. Now, if I come here, I read, read that. When it comes to functions, I never know what when to what to put in the console.log because there seems to be multiple parameters. Yes. So Jennifer, I'll I'll talk uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the, the function. I'll talk about that one function. But you know, this is also a function. So see here, uh, you know, uh, you know Jennifer, what it is doing? It says that. It says that a one string concatenated with a variable, which is blue color and it's showing me over here, concatenated with another string. Therefore, does that make sense to you? That basically what it is doing, it takes a variable and I combined two strings, one integer together. And this is called concatenation. Wonderful, you get that one. I hope everyone is getting that one, but I'm just trying to make a make a thing. So, so what's happening? Uh, yes, I know. I'll, I'll talk about that function as well. Now, this is about the variable. And again, at this point of time, I whether I use var, whether I use let, all of them will be same. Constant requires an initialization, so I'm not using the constant right now, but let age, age is equal to 20, age is equal to 40, age is equal to something, and you just keep on adding those values. Wonderful. Okay, now I'll move forward. Now, um, so most of you were like, you know, some of you are confused about the functions, by the way. So what I'll do, uh, like after defining the variables, I would just uh, ask a quick question for you guys that we have talked about the operators. You know about the plus operator. You know about the, you know about the minus operator. You know about the multiply operator. You know about the divide operator. These are all the operators that we have in language. And I would just like to quickly talk about this, these operators, because you know what I say is that, for example, I say let, uh, for example, age is equal to 20. And if I say that age is equal to age plus 10. Now, let's see again very quickly if I just make you understand that one. The new age is rather I should write console.log. The age is plus I'll give so you see in a string I'll have to give the space. So age is age and the new age is age again. Now see here what's happening. Actually, what has happened that age value was 20. I print that the age is 20. So take the age and print that. Then I do something with the age. I say age is equal to age plus 10. So the new age is age. Like again, it's it's just showing me that now the age has updated. So a variable gets a new value and it gets updated with that one. I can do age minus 10. I can do age multiply it, whatever. You know, you can do a lots of all the mathematical operations that are possible over here and you can you can implement or any of the mathematical operators over here. Ah, yes, so you know, uh, Jennifer, these are both 
the ways to to concatenate string and numbers in console.log. You can use a comma as well as you can use a plus. A plus makes much more sense because plus is called concatenation operator. We can use either. So plus has a very interesting fact. Plus, if it does have a string on either side of it, it makes both of them string. And that's a good question. So I, I'd like to just you know show you something. If I ask you, yes, console.log, and if I write, see here, if I write hello, rather, if I, if I, you know, then if I look at that, if I write two plus two, do you know what will be my answer? Of course, you should know. Two plus two, it will be answer will be four. Make sense? Now, how about this? Console.log two plus two. Now, see here, plus is a funny operator. 2 plus 2. What will be my output now? Jennifer, do you can you guess that? What will be my output now? Or anyone, can you guys guess what will be my output now? Exactly even, you're right. Not 2 plus 2, it will be 22. You see 2, 2. Because you know what plus does? Uh, plus what does? It actually looks in either side. If it finds a string, it will convert the other side on a string as well. And that's a funny thing about the... So concatenation happens. So you know, uh, in in uh, like you know when you are when you are using this for for uh, like console dot log, you can just write a comma as well. If I write a comma, look at that. It 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 has given a space and it just it just gives the two and two because now this is basically doing what spacing error out that one. So basically, what is that? It's actually plus is plus combines them and plus makes it you know one string and it makes it one string and that one string will just be printed out. So this plus and minus and multiply and all these operators are there and we will be using those operators in a very much abundance. Now, if I start, uh, so comma adds a space. Yes, comma is, is adding a space. It adds a space by itself and plus does not. Plus for plus, you'll have to just, you know, use use do the space intentionally. All right, so operators. And then we have the loops and all. How do you comment out several lines of <laughs> So Tina, uh, this is interesting. How do I comment? Not comment out. How do I toggle between them? If you select all of them and command forward slash for like, you know, uh, Mac, MacBook and control forward slash for the for the, you know, uh, key, uh, Windows command forward slash or control forward slash. It makes it comment. It, it toggles the thing. Multiple lines toggling. You see, Tina, can you try that out? Like command forward slash or control forward slash. It will make it make that one. Now. You know, did you get it? Comma at the space plus adds them together, right? Yes, plus adds them together or plus plus actually combines them together rather than adding. You should say Jennifer combines them together and without any space or anything. It just, you know, it says they it just takes that and, and add that at that one. OK, now I'll talk about start talking about functions and this is very important because functions. I've got a lot of questions related to functions. And I, I would like to spend some time on functions uh, in detail. Functions. First of all, what are functions? Functions are reusable piece of codes. I will say write once, use as many times as you want. Are you guys getting that? Reusable piece of codes. Write once, use as many times as you want. Um, functions are used for particular. Yes, yes, Tina, it is recorded. Tina, it is recorded. Very much recorded. But functions are used to 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 perform perform particular tasks, and we don't need to write the same code over and over. A function takes care of all executions. Now, what does that mean? I'll just show you. We write functions which are reusable piece of codes. We write them once and use as many times as you want. They're used for performing a particular task. We don't need to write the same code over and over. Function takes care of all the executions. Now come here. 
So I have a program. Let's let's start without a function. Without a function, what what will happen? And with function, what will happen? So for example, I have a variable x. So I can define. First of all, you know you have to keep in mind. We can define any name of the variable that would be capable of receiving the values, right? And I say var x is equal to x is equal to five. Now. What happened was I had a program and I needed uh, a square of five, a square of five, right? So I say I would write a statement. I would say, okay, console.log dot log x uh, uh, x multiply by x. Do you guys get it? X multiply by x, and it's a very simple example. You will I'll show you some some more. So I needed this one, and then my program was doing something else. And I'm not using a function by the way. Don't worry. I, I will. I'm making a ground. And then I again needed this statement, so I again wrote down x multiplied by x. And you know, maybe the value of x was changed also. X equal to six, and I needed x multiplied by x. Then, then my program was doing something else. <laughs> and then I x value change it. It 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 became seven, and I write console dot log, and I say x multiplied by x. Now, first of all, a very quick question. Uh, does everyone understand what x multiply by x means? Whatever is the value of x, plug in that value and multiply with same, like same x, five by five, and print that value. Six by six here, six by six here, seven by seven. Jennifer, do you make sense of it? What we are doing? We have x and we are just printing the squares of that number. Square of five, square of six square of seven. So look at that. I have written down a code and this is for example, consider this is my whole program. I needed to calculate the square three times. One, two, three. I had to write this same line three times. Are you guys making sense of it? I had to write the same line three times to get. To get to get a value. Now, now I'll just remember this scenario. I'll come here in JavaScript or in most of the languages. We have got something that takes care of this one. So I say function. Is square. I'm defining a function is square. Function syntax is this that it has a parenthesis and it has a curly bracket. Now I am saying that define a function whose name is a square. And how do we know this is a function? Because there are parentheses around that one. So again, a quick question. If I write a square and I write a square this one, which one is the function out of these two? How would you say that? You will very quickly say this is the function. It looks like this is not a function. Why? Because it does not have a parenthesis around that one. Right? A, a very a very basic definition, a basic understanding of this is. So I'm saying that write a function is square. That does what? That actually exactly I made up name. So my made up name, Jennifer, you can write anything. You can write Jennifer. I can write Norman. I can write Keen, whatever, right? So it's a, it's a name that you have made up. Now I'm saying I'm saying that this function should be able to square the numbers. I will give it a number and it will it will return me or it will print the square of that one. So let, let's write that a function square that prints the square of a number. That means the square of a number, right? Now, I would say this function square will receive one parameter. I call it parameter one, whatever. You can call it something, but let's say. I say it will receive a parameter, para one. It's called parameter. The function, whatever you write in the parenthesis is called parameters. And what it will do, what it will do, it will say console.log and it will print the square of this number. Now, what does that mean? Oh, I just put on this curly bracket. Now, what is the name of the parameter that it is receiving? Jennifer, can you tell me? I need to 
I need to calculate and print the square of the number that this square has received, that this square function has received. And what it has received, Jennifer, can you tell me? I have to do that multiply by the same thing. Exactly. So I'll say para one, multiply by para one. Did you guys get it? What is happening? It is receiving one parameter, which I have called para one. You can call it anything. You can say X, you can say Y, you can say Z, whatever. So para one, and I'm saying whatever has been passed, take that and multiply it with itself and console.log that. Function is defined. I need to call this function now. Okay, what I'll do is I'll comment this one because you know, I don't want uh, this to, why is it that sometimes we don't put anything in the brackets? That's wonderful. I'll, I'll just let you know, I'll, I'll just let you know. So uh, so Jennifer, I'll, I'll just let you know. First of all, let's talk about this one and I'll talk about why, why don't we write something. So now if I come here and I want to call this function, so I'll say square and I say five. Jennifer, do you know what will be my output? Um, Ellen, that's that's not very much required. We can define functions after after the other as well. Like you know, it's it's uh, it's not that very much required. You can you can define them anywhere. JavaScript has, is flexible in that. That that would print out twenty five. Wonderful, wonderful. That would print out twenty five. Good. Now if I ask you something, I have got a line of code that I provide some value, and if I say seven, what will be my output? Forty nine, of course. It will generate one. Now you see that this was the same thing that it was happening over here. Now I have written down it once and now I can just pass the value and get the square. So I can say square of 10. Give me all three squares. It will just give me all three squares. 25, 49 and 100. So Jennifer, what I want to make you understand. This para one is the name that that we have given to the parameter. If I come here, Jennifer, for your understanding, if I come here and I write X here. So what I need to change now, should I do I need to change line number 39 as well? Why? Because yes, now it is receiving the parameter with the name of X, with not with the name of para one. So I'll have to come here and I'll have to say X multiply by X because now it is receiving an X. To pass it again when calling the function. I'm pretty sure that's a Python thing. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. So you see here. So Natalina, are you are you are you getting this this concept now? I have to just pass the value over here. I'll, I'll just and, and what happens is look at it. Look at it here. I think the best way to understand is like placeholder for the exactly exactly. It's the placeholder. It's the placeholder for getting the value. See here, you know, even look at that. When I say square of five, I'll just remove this to, to. when I say square. This function is called and this five is passed as the value of X. So I'll write something. This X becomes five when I'm calling this one. X becomes five when I'm calling this one. And you know, virtually speaking, I'll, I'll tell you when I call this one, this happens. This five, this X is replaced with five. This is five and this is, and again, you know, it's not showing because five is, it cannot be a variable. Number cannot be a variable. Variable has to be a letter or something. Even do you understand? Actually, this happens when I, when I call this one, this five becomes everywhere where X is. All X are replaced with the five. I mean, even did you get that? What I'm saying? So everywhere where X was there, yes, you, you are right. It's called a placeholder. We, everywhere there is a X, it will be replaced with five. And what in what in this case? If I say seven, now everywhere this X is replaced with the seven. Seven is caught over here. Seven multiplied by seven, forty-nine is printed out. Make sense? Uh, so Jennifer, do you understand this much concept? Like it is the name that we give and we can use Mohammed. That's wonderful. Mohammed, are you, are you also, is it also helping you? That's wonderful. Now, Jennifer, I will come to your question, but first I, I wanted to. And so that's wonderful. Now, Jennifer, your previous question, a function, a function can, uh, uh, like function, um, has parameters. Now let's see that. I will write a function foo. Function foo. You know this is generally we write. Uh, 
Now, Jennifer, this, this was what you were talking about. A function foo, its name is foo, and it does not receive any parameters. But what it does is, whenever I call this function, it prints out console.log, prints out console.log, prints out console.log. So a function can have no parameter. A function can have one or more parameters. A function can return value or function may not return any value. Now listen to this one. This is a foo function that does not receive anything. But do you know, Jennifer, it's also a very useful function. If I write foo, you see what will happen. Whenever I need key in college, I will just write a foo over there. <laughs> you see that? I write a foo and this, this just calls. This just calls that and it prints out key in college twice because I'm calling this twice. Wonderful. Now, this is a function that does not receive anything. And a function can receive any number of parameters. So for example, there is a function. I, I use the square. Now I'm using a function another. I'm making another function. Add. This is my own name I have given. I say add will receive two parameters, n1 and n2, num number one and number two. Now, Jennifer, look at that one and anyone, everyone. Mohammed, just look at that and let me know if you don't understand. There is a function called add that receives two parameters. Printing key in college when the function is empty. That's wonderful. Many, that's a good question and I wanted you to ask this question. It's not an empty function. Gen uh, many, actually, it's not an empty function. It's a function. It's a function may not receive any parameters. It's not receiving any parameters, but a function can still be useful because it might have five lines of code. You know, you know. Let let me give you an example. And many for, with your question, I'm just giving. See here, many, and and you will appreciate that function. Keen. There is a function called keen which does not receive anything. But what it does is, look at that, what it does. What it does is that whenever it is called, it says console.log in college, right? And it's console.log, the best in NL, something like that, right? Console.log, something like that, your ultimate destination. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to make a, a good publicity of the king god. Now, now see here. So you know, many. Do you see that? The two values they can. Yeah, exactly. Ex Natalina, I'll definitely do that. See here. It's a function that does not receive anything, but many does. It does not mean that it is not useful. It is very useful because wherever just I call this function. This is called calling the function. I call this function. It comes there and prints three lines over there. It does not take the parameter. Sorry, it does returns whatever is in the curly bracket. OK, yes, it 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 actually not returns. It actually executes that. Ellen, uh, this might, might not be the right word. It returns. It does not return. It it executes these three lines. So whenever many I call this key in, key in function, it executes these three lines, executes these three lines. It executes three lines. Now, to your point, many do you understand that even though function does not receive anything, it can do a lots of lots of wonderful things. Even, even if I talk about another very important function, a function add, which does not receive anything, interestingly, but you see what it can do, var n1 equal to 10, var n2 equal to 20, console.log n1 plus n2. Now see here, many, this is a very interesting example. It's an add function, that does not receive anything from outside world, but inside its own world, it has two variables defined, and it prints the sum of those two variables. Now, the difference will be, now I'll call this function without any parameters, and, and see what will be my output. You see 30. I don't know where this 30 is coming from, because this function has something inside its own body. I don't know where it is coming from, but it is doing some useful thing. It is showing me the sum of two numbers, and that is something that you have defined the logic inside. But the concept is that it does not take anything from out of the world when you should use var and when you should don't. Uh, Marlena, uh, please don't. Uh, you, you know, uh, you know when we should var. 
So see here, uh, Vandana, whenever you are defining a variable in the very beginning, I told you when you are defining or declaring a variable, we use the var keyword to define the variable. So whenever you have to define a new, you see n, n1 was a new variable, I had to use var n1. And, and n2 was a new variable, I had to use var n2. Vandana, are you getting that point? Whenever you are defining a new variable, you will use var. And whenever you are using that variable, you don't need to use var. But let and var was the same. Um, Jennifer, they are the same. Right now, consider they are the same. They have certain, they have certain, you know, scope related issues. But yes, let and var are same. Don't, you know, don't don't go into this situation right now. The letter var different. Just consider that I use var, I use let. They're same. Yes, right now consider they are they are same. But they have a scopic issues. A scope issues. Many you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Uh Hi, thank you. I just want to look at the line 58. Just uh, what about if you have a function just like you have it there and you have a, a, a perimeter inside, say you have five function add in the uh, clutter bracket, you have five in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you put a number there and yeah, you, okay. you run that. So what is it going to return? Is it going to return 30 plus five? OK, that's a very good question. First of all, many just listen. I cannot put a five over here the because here what we are supposed to write actually here we are. So you, you I think you want to say if I if I print five over here because here we have to define a variable that would be able to catch the value. You, you know what I mean Manny? Yes. OK, okay. listen and, and be unmuted Manny for a second because you know it's it's good when I when I talk to someone. Now you say that if I pass a five now many tell me. Is there anything sitting in this parenthesis to catch this five? Yes or no? No. Is there nothing is there? So this five will go in vain. You know what will happen? I'll run this program and I'll show you. So five has gone somewhere in the air. It is doing its own thing because it has two variable and it is just adding those together. Because five, I passed it, but there was nothing to catch it, nothing to use it. Now, Mary, do you understand that one? There was nothing to catch that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, Mary, be, be unmuted. If I write here X, look at that. Look at that. Uh, Alan, because I am giving an example which does not use any parameter, I'm just telling that even without parameters, a function can be a useful thing. Alan, are you getting that my point? I am actually giving an example. I will come to the example where there will be parameters as well. Alan, do you know what I'm saying? It's you are right. It has to have N1 and N2 over here like that. But I'm giving you an example that even a function can be useful without having a variable or without having a parameter. Aaron, do you get do, do, do you get my point? I, I I hope I was so yes, you are right. Yes, they could be parameters. But I am right now saying that I am giving an example that a function, even if it does not receive anything, it can be a useful thing. It can define its own variable inside. You know, right now, just bear with me. I'm telling you those functions that do not have any parameters. I'll talk about the parameters. OK, so many if you many right now, I won't I won't go into that one, you know, because I can go into that one. I can I can just write here and, and if I write X over here. Now see here many. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, thank you very much. Now, yes. now look at that here. If I say that this is a function and I say N1 plus N2 plus X. Now many, can you guess the output? What will be the output now? 30x. 30x, uh, 30x OK. <laughs> Let's see that. It's 35. <laughs> you know, you know many why? Because N1 had a value of 10. N2 has a value of 20. So they both were integers. They were not strings. If they were not strings, X is also an integer which you are passing from outside world. It becomes 5. So 10 plus 20 plus 5. Many, does that make sense? Yes, it sir. Becomes 30. You, you get it? Yes, I do. <laughs> and and now, because you know you are a little confused in that concept, I'll I'll try to do that for you. If I write hello, and if I write uh, hello plus x, for example, many, can you guess the output? What will be the output of this program? Can you uh, guess the output? It will yeah, be what? and five. Sorry. Five and a hello. Hello, hello and hello and five. That's yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful. You know what I mean? Hello five. That's wonderful. You see hello five is coming up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now another very interesting thing. If I say hello plus N1 plus X. 
Can, can you guys guess the output? What will be the output now? Hello, 15. Hello, 15. OK, let's run that and see that. <laughs> you, you know, you know, you know why? <laughs> you know, listen, even listen why it has happened. Actually, this is a number. This is a number. But do you see that here is a string also coming up? Remember, it is the behavior of this addition plus operator. If it finds a string on any side of it, it will make try to make everything as a string. It has taken this also as a string and this also as a string. So even if I just come here and I write N2, let's run that one. You see that what is happening? Hello, one, uh, hello, 10, 5, 20. Whenever there is a string, it will make everything as a string. And just the point, if I just remove this from here, I remove this from here, it's now, it will just do what? It will just say 35 because now all of them are numbered. Where did you get? Yes, makes sense. It's taking the 10 and 5 and push pushing them together because of the string to the left. Yes, they are pushing them together. Now, I did not want, I did not intend to use the parameter here. So I will I will just keep this one. And Ellen, as you ask the question, I'm, I'm going to that one. Now, the same type of function, if we write, that can receive the parameters. I write add. Now see here. I say that actually N1, and and to, and and now here will be uh, here there is a very important question that I think Madlana asked where to use var and where to don't use var. Madlana, I will come to your question again over here. Now, if you see here, if I say console dot log n1 plus n2. Now, now please be active, everyone, because I'm about to discuss this one, and I'm really happy that you guys are unmuting and discussing it with me. I have a function add that receives two parameters now. This is a this is a function that receives parameter. It has two parameters. It will receive two values from me. So if I pass my two values, what will happen? Okay. So if I call this function at 5, comma 10, what will be my output? Can, can you guys write in the chat window? What will be my output? 15. What happened happening if? Hello plus n1 plus n2. Uh, yes. So Mohammed, what has happening? Hello was a uh, hello. If it is a string, it will make everything a string. Mohammed, it will it will make everything a string. So hello n1 n2 will be hello 10 15. <laughs> everything will become a 10 and 10 and 20. Mohammed, you know what I mean? Now yes. So people say that the result will be 15. Yes, you are right. You are very right. <laughs> you know because what happened is that I have passed two parameters. Alan. Do you see that I pass two parameters 10 and 5. Now I'm passing those parameters. And do you remember previously I was calling this function like this because it was not receiving any parameters. So function has to tell us that we I am passing some parameters. And now to your question, Alan, you, that you asked, I'll, I'll come to your question. You asked that where should you where? Actually, these N1 and N2 are also new variables, but JavaScript says you are allowed not to use a var over here. Rather, not allowed. It's not the syntax. Even though they are also considered as a new variables, comes fresh new variables. But when you are passing them in the parameters, don't use them. Don't use them. So is add one n one n two or add five ten the same as var n one is equal to five var? Exactly, exactly. So I will I will write that. You are right, Madalena. See here when I'm calling add five comma ten, I'm actually doing what? I'm actually doing what I'm saying N1 becomes 5 and N2 becomes 10. Yes, Marlana, that's wonderful. You understand? Marlana, at 5, 10 means I'm doing this. N plugs in 5 and N2, N1 plugs in 5 and N2 plugs in 10 and they come. Ellen, are you there? Ellen, did, did, you, did you get this concept of this parameter that I'm passing? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now I would stop here. Many, are you? Are you 100% satisfied? Are you understanding what is going on over here? That we have we have a function, we have a variable, we are just you know trying to trying to do that. Now, what about this one? Let's let's make this program. Yes, let's make the program a bit more interesting. Var x is now x is inside there. I have defined an x over there. And if I say n1 plus n2 plus x, can you guys tell me what will be my output now? Can you tell me what will be my output now? 25, because you know why is what is happening is that it takes the parameters, 5 plugs in here, 10 plugs in here, 
15 and it adds 10. So it becomes 15 plus 10 plus. Uh, so 5 and it becomes 25, 25. That's wonderful. Should I hope that you guys have started to understand the little concept of this one? Because I'm about to switch my little gear. I'll talk about, you know, the return as well, because I've not talked about any return or anything, but I'll talk about some of the return. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Katrina says, understand. So now here comes another very important issue. Here comes very another important, very, very important issue. A function as it can receive some parameters, as I said, and again, I'm, I'm, I will keep on changing the name because you guys understand, think that maybe it's the default. X1 and X2, it will receive two one numbers, X1 and X2. As it was printing, it also can, it also can return some value. So if I write a return, and I say x1 plus x2. Now, be very careful. If I say add 5 comma 10, what will be my output? I need response from all of you, or most of you. What will be my output now? Nothing, nothing. Wonderful, no output. That's exactly because it is just returning and we are not catching. That's a wonderful answer. And I always wanted to have. I always wanted. So I, I'll just come here and I'll say console.log and I would print. Now what will be my output? Of course, you know that what will be my output. Now it will be 25. Uh, sorry, 15. 10 plus, 10 plus 5 is 15. Jennifer, are you getting that one? Because I'm about to tell you something very, very interesting. Okay. This program is returning some value. If I come here, somehow I say var result is equal to x plus x1 plus x2, right? Okay, save. What will be my output now? What will be my output now? Console.log add. Look at my look at my function code. I have no return statement there. Keep in mind. But I'm saying result is equal to x1 plus x2. What should be my output now? Now please try to guess. Don't run it because you know, not sure, but I think nothing. Manny says 15. Good. Anyone else? 15. Jennifer. Wonderful. Malana says nothing. Wonderful. Look at that. Yes, those who are saying nothing, they are right. Because not they are not also right. Undefined. If a function does not return explicitly anything, it always returns undefined. So I call this function. This function has no return statement. Technically speaking, here is something written. Return undefined. Are you guys getting that one? I'm just writing that. It, it never has. It never has there. If there is no explicit return. Jennifer, we, we actually need, uh, we actually, in most of the situations, we need it. But I'm just telling you that if we do not use return, Jennifer, it always returns undefined. Okay. I'll talk about something else. Console.log. We didn't use it in the last examples though. Ah, uh, yeah, we, we did not use it because we were not expecting any out, uh, re return from them. So don't confuse it with the last example. I'm, I'm going, you know, slow, slowly step by step. So in last example, I, I didn't even talk about the return. But return is something that a function always do. If there is something, it returns. If it, there is not something, it does not. It, it returns and undefined. Jennifer, you got it? Yes, exactly. Uh, yes, and many. Now, if you see here, what will be my output now? Can anyone tell me what will be my output? I need exact output. Don't run it and tell me exact output. What will be exact output? <laughs> now look at that. Look at my output. It's 15 and undefined. Corina, look at that. Corina, I, I, I would like to talk about that. It received two parameters. I call this function. Now this place is waiting for a value. You know what I mean? This place is waiting for a value. I call this function. It goes over here. X1 becomes 5. X2 becomes 10. There is a new variable. Result is equal to X1 plus X2. Result is stored. 15 is stored console.log result, it prints out 15. And now when the function gets completed, I come back over here. Is this function returning anything? Yes or no? Explicitly. Is this function explicitly returning anything? 
Yes or no, Corina? No. If it is not returning anything explicitly, it is actually returning undefined, and this whole code, this one will receive undefined over here. Are you guys getting that one undefined? Did you guys get it? And that undefined will be printed out because it is not returning anything. Now, how about this? Return result. Please think about it and tell me what will be my exact output. I need exact output. If there is one line, what will be one line? If there are two lines, what will be two lines? Can someone tell me? Jennifer says 15, 15. Wonderful, Jennifer. Wonderful. Jennifer, do you know why 15, 15? First 15. Exactly. So once you put into a variable, you have to return. No, no. We, yes, we have to return it, but I'm do, so look at that. Even I'm asking what will be the output over here? Here it will not only calculate them in the result, it will print that as well and then return that as well. So I will first of all get this print 15, first 15, and then it returns that. And again, this all will be replaced with 15 and I get a 15 in my console.log. Even do you get it what I'm trying to say? Are you, are you getting that one? But I'm trying to say even. A little bit confused. Even, even look at that. Even look at that. Um, so you see that I I call this function even uh, who is also confused with you. <laughs> many, many look, look at here and please one of you. I would like I would like you guys to just, you know, be can can someone of you unmute Jennifer, can you unmute yourself? You know, you know, because you know it's it's always give me a good understanding that how much you are understanding things. Jennifer, can you I, oh, can sure. I oh. think what I don't understand is like the last example you just did. Mm -hmm. Um, it was giving us the results, but you weren't doing any returns. Mm -hmm. And but now we're doing returns. So I just mm -hmm. I don't know when we're supposed to be using returns or not. If that okay. makes sense. Okay, Jennifer, be be unmuted for a second. You know, I want I want to talk to you. <laughs> so yeah. So Jennifer, it really depends upon you that if you want to have a return from a function, you always use this return statement. But at times you might want to create functions that do not return anything and you want everything to be done inside that function. Now the situation is be, be unmuted. If there is no return, I will call this. I will not call this function this way. Why? Because it is not returning anything and it is giving a console output. So I can directly call this function like this. Be unmuted, uh, Jennifer, because I, I would like to talk to you. You mm -hmm. see, I call this function. Five is plug into X1 and 10 is plug into X2. Jennifer, make sense? There is a new new variable created, which says 5 plus 10, 15. Console.log, it prints out and gives the result. Now look at that. Do I get the output? Yes, because there is a console statement inside the function body. Jennifer, make sense? Yeah. Now, now I tell you that no, Jennifer, your function should print the result and also return the result. You will say, okay, Norman, if you want that, I will say return result. Now listen, if I call this function in this same situation, will I get 15 twice or once only? Jennifer. Twice? <laughs> I twice? don't know, twice. Okay, okay, not a problem, not a problem. Look at that. I run that, I get only once. Why? Because okay. you know, it is returning the value, but am I printing that value through somehow over here? It is written actually this all when I call this function Jennifer, it prints out the result. This is 15, which is coming up, but then it returns the result. But is there anything to catch that result? When you, you know what I'm saying? So for example, if I say bar uh, X is equal to. Jennifer, now tell me. If I come here and I write console dot log. If I write uh, X, so Jennifer, do you understand that now it will print 15 twice? Um, I guess I, I don't know. I, I don't know okay. if I'm getting it. No, 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 no. Listen, add five and ten. Does it return a value right now? Yes. Does it return a value? Yes. Yes. It first of all prints that value in the console.log and then returns that value. Make sense? So when I when I run this step, this function is called. It gets two values. It prints the result and returns the result. Result comes over here. And what is the result by the way? 15. Mm -hmm. 15 is basically I catch that 15 in X. X is equal to 15. 
it becomes 15 when I call this function. And when I say console.log x, x now has a 15, which was sent back from my add function. Right. I guess I'm just confused as to why we would have to do return and console log. Like what? Oh, you know what there, I mean? Like is, why would you is, choose that? So Jennifer, Jennifer, there is no reason in the world to do both of these things together. Why I'm doing that? I'm trying to make you understand that what's happening actually, you know, behind the scenes. A function oh. can a function can do console.logs. A function can do a lots of things. I, what I'm trying to say that function can do virtually everything that you do in your general program. But a function usually, if you look at the last examples that we have done in our last class, you know, the uh, the regular expression like examples and all those that there we were mostly returning the things. So if you if you again, so Jennifer, be with me. If I take it away, there is no harm in just, you know, doing that because now now function will not be printing anything and now I'll be getting 15 only once. You know why? It receives 5 and 10 in X1 and X2. Result is calculated and result is returned. Now, when this function is called with 5 and 10, it becomes 15 and it 15 is returned over here and it is plugged into X as it was plugging in over here on the on the console log. Jennifer, you remember it was plugging into, into the console log uh, add here so it's it plug in and it saves into x and then i say console.log x and it prints that 15 over here so console.log i've taken away from my function so that means now this function is not uh, is not consoling anything out just returning and cal calculating and returning so if you console.log within the function you don't mm -hmm. need a return but if you do it outside the function you do need a return uh yes you can say that like again, uh, in like uh, if I simplify that, Jennifer, you 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 will most likely you know it, it really depends upon. Listen, Jennifer, if I give you a question, write a function in that prints out the 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 sum of three numbers. You will write a function and you will print. Uh, I'm saying prints out. So you will just write and you write console dot log inside that one and you will print the result. I say write a function in that returns the sum of three numbers. Jennifer, do you understand my two questions? My first question, write a function that prints the result. Write a function that returns the result. Are you, uh, are you getting that? Yes, I just don't, I still don't understand the difference though, what printing and returning. If it's giving you the same answer, I don't understand what the difference. Ah, difference is, yeah, okay. So the difference is again, difference is here that at times you will say that I've been, I'm writing a function that will just that will just give all the output that you need and it will it will produce that output so you know actually i think what what you are not understanding is there are two things one is the body of the function and one is what is what function is returning so output of the function and return of the function are two different things so function has virtually if i if i talk about that function has virtually three things function listen that function can output a lot of things. A function can return a value if you need, return a value if you need. And a function can accept any number of parameters too. Jennifer, so again, it really depends upon your need. Sometimes you will write a function that would output things. Sometimes you'll write a function that would return. Now, to make your life easier right now, I'll, I'll just try to make your life easier, even though I might be, I might not be 100% correct in my statement, but I'm making a statement here for everyone's ease. Right now, you understand that in JavaScript, you will always use a return and you might, you might never want to have a print on this, on, on a function, you will always return. Jennifer, so right now, just, you know, again, just to make your life easier and, and I want you to just, you know, understand the concept. So I would say that, okay, in JavaScript, you will always return something from a function. And why I'm doing, and why I'm saying that, because we have seen that in JavaScript, if you do not return anything explicitly, an implicit undefined is returned. Are you, are you getting that, Jennifer? So, yes, you, yeah. know, you know, we'll say that function, not can, <laughs> I'll say a function always, returns something and it can be it can be a value or Jennifer can you complete the sentence or what will be that or undefined if you do not use the function return statement it will return an undefined make sense now 
let's quickly write some functions that would that would return the value. So, so for example, uh, let's write a function that would that would add three numbers. For example, the function, and let's call it um, addition. Just that I'm defining that, and it will receive three numbers. It will receive num one comma num two comma num three. It will do what? It will just return num one plus num two plus num three. Make sense? It, it will just return. Now, if it returns, I can catch it at multiple places. I can say console.log and I write addition and I write 3, 4, 5. Now, function will return 4 plus 3, 7 plus 5, 12, and this 12 will be plugged in over here and I'll get my console.log output over here. Jennifer, does that make sense? It is returning a value. Yes. And again, yeah. And understand that's wonderful. It returns a value and we can just, you know, print that value over here. Now I'm just moving a little more forward and I'll, I'll just talk about some of the functions that we talked about yesterday. Like, you know, we were talking about our class function change case. See here, I will pass you a variable, uh, a string, and I can call it this string anything name. I'll pass you a, a variable called name. And return. Name dot. To uppercase. This is the function, you know, string function. Now what will happen if I call this function and I say, for example, console dot log. Console dot log and I say change case. And I pass uh, like, you know, I pass key in a small letter. What will be my output? You know what will be my return? It will take key in the name and it will just convert that and it will return that to uppercase. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Right now, if I write another function. Function. Check first. Check first letter. I'll pass you a string str. I can call it anything. I'll pass a string to you. You check its first letter. Uh, or maybe yes, let's say return first. Return first. What would happen if you passed a number instead of a string? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this one. If I say return first, uh, not return, return will um, give first. I want it to return the first number of, of the string, uh, first uh, first uh, letter of the string. So it will say return uh, str dot um, let's uh, let's say return str of zero. Now, if I pass console.log, if I pass if first and I pass hello. Right, what will happen? You see my result. So it only returns an H, returns S of zero. Now, Alan says, what will happen if I pass a number to it? Alan, that's a very good question. If I come here and if I say 10, something like that, I've passed the 10. Look at that, what will happen? Undefined, you know, because it is expecting because this this str of zero actually applies on the string. If it is a string, it will return the value. Otherwise, it will say, I don't know what you are trying to ask. Are you guys are you guys, are you getting that, Alan? Alan, do you understand that? If you pass number, it will say, I don't know how to calculate str of zero. Yes. How about this one? If I just convert that into a string. Look at that. What will what will happen now, Alan? To your question. If I come here and if I if I say the see, see that so it's it's now a string and it has first letter. Exactly. So numbers are numbers, and you know how does it know that you are talking about a string if you are making up your parameter name as str? Jennifer, it never knows it. I'm just telling you that it it just it actually it it you can pass a number over here, but here it will be just get get confused because if it was not a string as we did with the, with the ten. So Jennifer, it over here, what it does is it says, oh, this is a number. How can I calculate str of zero? Jennifer, you know what I mean? It does not know that we are passing a string. Jennifer, did you get it? What I'm saying? Actually, it's it's this point where it will just get confused. And again, Jennifer, to your question, if it just just returns the string, you know, does nothing on that one. 
yeah that that does it 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 does nothing 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 to that one now you see if you if i pass 10 <laughs> it has no problems it will say okay 10 is 10 and if i say hello because it's not because i'm applying any operation you see hello is hello and 10 is 10 it just returns as it is but you know what happens when i say str of 0 now it says okay it means that something that i'm receiving should have to be a string should have to be a string Jennifer, are you making sense of it? It has to be a string because now you are saying return str of zero. Wonderful. Now, if I say, uh, if I if I if I do something like that, str of zero dot two upper case. Now, just take the first letter. You know, you know what what it will do? It will take my string. It will it will take my string. For example, I pass normal, and and what it happens? If I save that one, right, it will just return the first letter by converting it into into the into capital. So n is being returned str zero to 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 uppercase. Does it does it make sense to everyone? Is this is this session going helpful for anyone? Because you know I I just want to know that is it is it going helpful, Alan? Alan, you have given a thumbs up. But Lana, you have Muhammad and Manny. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Katrina, Brandon. It's going really um, good. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, I just want to know, like, you know, just want to know a, a quick feedback over here. Do you guys know, uh, like, you know, want me to just, you know, talk about something else? I was hoping you could go over loops at some point if there's not. Uh, I mean, not by the way, maybe not today, but I will definitely, I will definitely do that in, in some other review session, I mean. And definitely do that loops and for loops and all those. I'll, I'll definitely want to go through them. So related to functions, is there anything else? Anyone having else any concept problem? Or could you run through using node in the terminal again? Yes. So you know node in the terminal. You see here um, you have to reach to Brandon to the folder. First of all, you see I've reached to the review folder. Oh, practice. I'm going to get an answer key for the day. Ah, uh, yeah, Marlana, you will get it. Like you know, by answer key you mean the solution, right? So, uh, so you know, Brandon, you have to come into the folder first of all. You see my lecture folder reviews 29 September, and then you run note and write the file name script.js. Then it will run. Brandon, if you want, you can share your screen, and I can help you out maybe with that one, because it looks like maybe you you will not be reaching to the right folder. Maybe I don't know. Would you mind sharing your screen and, and discuss that? Sure, sure. I'm stopping sharing and you can share your screen. Uh, yes, Brendan, I'm waiting for your screen share. That's good. We can see your screen now. OK, now show me. OK, over here, An unexpected identifier. Oh, um, OK, so. Oh, I got it. Can you write? Uh, can you hit Command C right now? Command C. Or control C, you know, whatever control command C. Can you hit? I, I don't know. Uh, in the uh, terminal itself or in the. No, no, terminal, in the terminal, in the terminal. Here, yeah. Command, command. C or control C. Okay. Control C again. Wonderful. Now, now listen, listen, listen. Uh, now write note, uh, note space. And what is the name of the file? Have you have you kept it script.js? Yes, script.js. Right, script.js. Hit enter. Okay. Uh, can you show me your script? Uh, is it is it the top? Okay. Uh, you did not save this document. Can you can you go to the top and hit command S in script.js? Yes, command S, control S. Yeah, wonderful. Now 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 use the arrow key and 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 uh, use the up arrow key in that terminal. Up arrow key in the terminal. Click on the terminal and hit up arrow key. And hit enter. Do you see the output? Uh, okay, so it wasn't saved. That was the problem. 
you were you were actually you ha you went inside the node something and it was inside the node so i had to exit out of that one you see that you were you were inside the node or something <laughs> okay control c backs yeah. out of that again yeah 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 right <laughs> okay thanks so much uh, so brendan it was it was a helpful review oh definitely okay okay Okay, yes. So Jennifer, uh, yeah, some practice exercise in the class. That was they were assigned. Show the logic. Um, uh, Jennifer, I will definitely try to do that. And how about if any does that? Because I think any, uh, if you, if you, because you know, uh, uh, I have to cover up the topics, and any can just go over with that. Is it okay if any goes over to, with those, or maybe you know, if I ask, uh, uh, you know, Nicholas to go over to that those yeah. logics? Wonderful. So I'll ask any to do that, right? And any would be discussing all the solutions with you uh, next time, right? But anyhow, you have any questions, please let me know. And I would definitely be help, happy to help you out. And right now, I might be just, just gets us to do them on our own and does not really go over the solution. Oh, Jennifer, I'll ask. Uh, uh, yes, the solution will be posted as well, Alan. And I'll ask uh, uh, any to just, you know, uh, to 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 have that, to solve that, those questions as well, right? Not a problem. OK, so what I'll do is now I'll just make a comment to this one review session. And now I have committed that one. Hopefully that would be available. So. I just have a little little and uh, many you want to say something. Yeah, I can't find time in our icon. Uh, what, what you can find? I didn't get it, many. What do you say? No, I oh. said I cannot locate the terminal icon on my. Oh, would you would you mind sharing your screen, uh, many? I'll I can help you out. Sure. 